Well, hello from beautiful Audrain County, Missouri, Sheriff Matt Aller. I know I gave you the initial review of the Taurus 327 Federal Magnum that I bought one for me and one for my brother-in-law, but there's been a couple of unexpected things happened and I thought maybe it would be nice if you had the update on that. Uh, if you were thinking about buying one of these, this update may help you, it may not, I don't know. So I bought this gun, I don't know, six weeks or so ago and by now the round count is probably given the half box i've got left and what i bought i'm going to say somewhere around 225 rounds of 327 federal magnum now i've shot other calibers through it i've shot 32 smith and wesson 32 smith and wesson long and 32 h and r magnum so the round count may be a little higher maybe closer to 350. i shoot it quite a bit for being such a small gun but I do carry it quite a bit as well. And I think in the initial review, I told you that this may turn into, I was, I fish a lot. And I always carry a gun typically in my back pocket when I'm fishing. Uh, if I'm wearing shorts, it's in my front pocket. It's, it's usually a J-frame, like an alloy J-frame 38. But I thought maybe, maybe this might replace that. And so far, it's done a pretty good job of it. Uh, you can see, I think you can see there's some, there's some wear on the sharp edges where the finish is starting to wear off and i did put some neon green paint on the site so it would contrast but thus far it's done pretty good and i like the well i like and i don't like i don't like the short grip because i've got big meat hooks but i like the short grip because it makes it easier to carry but anyway this past friday uh, we catfish a lot and we we generally set lines either uh, pole lines uh, off of, of stumps or we set lines jug lines and that is actually a little bit dangerous especially where we fish so mark twain lake is a man-made man reservoir and there's a river channel that goes through there from the salt river but if you get outside the channel there are a lot of trees that are left over that are just below the water boats uh, hit trees all the time several boats a year sink in that lake but during fishing a lot of times we'll bump into stumps and things like that this past friday after work four of us got together decided we were going to go set catfish lines and the wind that evening was 30-ish miles an hour with probably 40 mile an hour gusts so it was pretty rough and we were setting pole lines off tree stumps so you got to get out of the channel to do that and the boat is really hard to control whenever the wind is that high. So I always wear an automatic personal flotation device. I've never been thrown off before, but when you're messing with catfish lines, tip, generally we use circle hooks, which uh, are a hook that is, is not like a regular fishing hook, like a J. It, it actually circles around, it makes it harder for a fish to get off. So if you get hooked by one of those things and it's attached to a tree, it'll pull you in. Uh, if you bump a tree hard enough, it'll knock you in. If you're standing on the deck getting ready to set a line, all kinds of bad things can happen while you're doing this. You can get line wrapped around your foot when you throw, uh, especially if you're doing a trot line that's weighted. So a lot of weird stuff happens when you're setting catfish lines, at least in my experience. But we were setting catfish lines and... I was standing near the deck of the boat, near the edge of the deck, getting ready to set a line, and we hit a stump, and it threw me into the water, and my personal flotation device inflated. I had on winter clothes. It was really chilly. I had on a, a cotton sweatshirt, Levi's, and I had on boots, and it was very difficult to swim, and I'm a strong swimmer. I swim all the time, uh, especially in the summer, and it made it very difficult to swim, but the guys were able to get a pole out to me and, and get the boat maneuvered around. Uh, because the, the wind was blowing the boat away and it was very difficult to catch up to so I eventually got back on the boat and one of the guys on the boat said hey you'd probably need to empty your pockets because I know you got stuff in your pockets so one of the things that was in my pocket was this Taurus 327 Magnum and I made my mind up right then that I was going to do nothing to this gun I took it out I took the rounds out of the out of the cylinder dried them off with a paper towel uh, left the gun open while we ran the boat across the lake, let the, let the cylinder, let the charge holes or the uh, chambers in the cylinder dry out some. Once it was dry, I put the rounds back in it, closed it up. I carried it all weekend in my pocket and we did more fishing, uh, probably caught 150 pounds of fish. 
uh, you'll see some pictures here at the end because one of the guys was gracious enough to, to take some pictures after I actually got back onto the boat. Uh, I look like a drowned rat. But and it was very unpleasant. The water was 42 degrees this weekend. So not only was it shocking uh, when, when you get knocked off the boat, but it was equally shocking when you hit 42 degree water. And then you can't really swim all that well because your clothes are so heavy. I mean, your clothes probably add 20, 25 pounds by the time they get wet and plus you're wearing boots. So anyway, long and the short of it is, I made my mind up that I wasn't gonna do anything with this gun. It's not seen a lick of oil, it's not seen a cleaning, it ain't seen nothing other than my pocket. And that was four days ago. Um, you can see that there's no rust on the finish. There's no rust in the bore. There's no rust on the cylinder face. There's no rust on the back of the trigger where you would normally see rust. Now, I've not taken it apart. I don't know what the internals look like. Uh, cylinder, bleh, cylinder latch is not rusted. Hammer is not rusted. So this gun air dried, which air drying, typically air drying steel is what causes rust. It's oxidation. And there's just nothing on this gun. The action seems unaffected. Uh, it's still... For a Taurus, I, this is the first Taurus revolver I've ever owned. It has a, it, I always thought it did have a very good action for a small revolver. The action's unaffected. The function is unaffected. So today we're going to shoot it and see if our torture did anything to stop the Taurus 327 Federal Magnum. I'm going to suspect that it didn't. But we're going to load it up and uh, we're going give it, to uh, give it some rounds and see what happens. All right, here we go. Six rounds after our unintended torture test. Looks like it works just fine. We'll do six more. Here we go. So, for a $300 revolver that some people turn their nose up to, uh, I can say that I'm a Smith & Wesson guy. I can say that I'm pretty impressed. Uh, given the given the abuse now, it's not been prolonged abuse, but I've never went swimming or fallen in a lake with a gun in my pocket as of yet, except this one. And the fact that it has no rust on it that I can see, this I mean the the cylinder yoke still turns just fine. So there, I'm assuming there's probably no rust in there. Uh, the internals feel fine. Ah. At this point, I can't say enough about this cheap bargain revolver. I like the caliber. I think 32, especially the 327 Magnum, but the 32 H and R Mag. I think they're I think they're kind of underrated. I think they get overlooked, and I, and I I think they're a pretty solid caliber for a de small defensive gun like this. So, if you were on the fence about a Taurus in 327 Federal Magnum. Uh, Here's some unintended abuse that I never intended on happening, but um, I can certainly tell you that based on what I know and my 30-year my experience carrying firearms and having some get wet and sweating on them and, and having them in and out of pockets and in and out of holsters, this is not, this is not a, I don't think this is a bad bargain. I think this is probably worth taking a look at. So. Anyway, from Audrain County, Missouri, Sheriff Matt Aller, have a great day.